Hi everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever you're watching this video, this is Ray. I'm Kamiana from Rosedale. I'm pointing this video out there to my friends who might be thinking about short sell or had some questions about the short sell. And I wanted to uh, give some information of some of my experiences I've had in the last year since my last video about it. Uh, first of all, the market is getting better, so you know I just wanted to put that out there. So those of you who are hanging on and waiting the houses to get better, well, the prices are, are getting better. We're seeing some stabilization. Unfortunately, there's still a long way to go when it comes to improvement in the value of the homes. Uh, we have a lot of inventory still on the market. Uh, there's uh, we were so high and had you know a long way to fall. So going back up the other way is going to take time. And as they say things always come down faster than they go up. And we saw that in the stock market. We see that basically in every market, but even so, more in real estate. So uh, I'm gonna try to make this as short as possible, keep it you know, short and entertaining. Uh, I do wanna say that please check all my information against what you can find on Google um, uh, with your attorney or with your accountant or CPA, okay? So with that being said, um, what is a short sale? A short sale is basically when you're in a situation where you have to sell your house less than the actual loan that's on it, whether it's first and second mortgage combined or just first mortgage alone. And uh, uh, typically what we're seeing is maybe 20 to 30% off. So some of us, we bought houses in the half a million dollar range. Maybe your house is only worth 400,000 or 420 or something in that range. That's kind of like what's happening with me. Um, and to sell the house, if I want to get out of my house right now, I unless I make up the difference, which I can if you have enough cash, if you can make up the difference to the bank, or you, ha you can sell your house short. And that's what a lot of people are opting to do because some people don't have, most of the people don't have the cash right now. And what if there was a hardship, loss of job or loss of hours? You know, it could be some people's just loss of overtime. Uh, you could be on an adjustable rate mortgage. Um, there could be some separation in the, in the family or you know, just better opportunities in other areas. So there's a lot of different reasons why people are short selling their homes. They just have to get out. They're not used to being landlords. So they've opted to do a short sale. So they basically have to pay the bank. The bank has to accept a lower amount than what's owed to them. So that's up to the bank. There's a process, <clears throat> there's a process on how to do that. Um, we've done a, a, quite a number of them in the last, you know, since 08, so about almost three years now, it's been a long time that this thing's been going on. Uh, but, uh, you know, it is something that we need to have as a reality nowadays. Actually, what's interesting is that before, you couldn't appraise your house, assess the value of your house based on foreclosures or short sales that's happening in the area. Well, that's about 90% of our market right now, so definitely the short sales and the foreclosures in the neighborhood are affecting your value. And when that happens, it's, you know, if you're a buyer, that's awesome, you get a great deal. But if you're a seller, it's and you have a lot of competition out there, and a lot of people are, are going for the sale. So real quick, um, short sale. We we talked about why short sale. Uh, repercussions. What's the impact on the credit? Well, I, we've already been in the market long enough that we've seen people who have bought homes again after they short sold their home two years ago, and that's because they kept their credit pretty decent after. Now. A lot of uh, rumors are out there saying that you have to stop making your mortgage payments to affect the short sale. Not necessarily true. I've done short sales where people just kept up with the mortgage payment and you know had to get out of the deal, and they were successfully able to do that. Uh, you know, there's a way to get that done without impacting your credit adversely too much. Now, I will show short sale or debt satisfied. Um, you know, on your credit card, on your credit report, and you might take a couple of hits on that. But credit is really, it's it's your value. What do you value your credit as? A lot of people they they just like to be able to get out of the out of the situation that they're in. I mean, um, a lot of reasons for that as well. So, if you do or have stopped making ma making your payments, it takes about. Uh, a year and a half on average to, f to foreclose a house. I mean, that's just a national average. And we just uh, got information that Bank of America, there's, there's basically three companies that hold the, the servicing of most of the loans, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, and Chase. And Bank of America right now is about two years before they make a foreclosure on the house. So if you stop making payments, you know, two years, 
is on average what a person can typically expect before the foreclosure process is completed. And by the way, a foreclosure and a short sale, the repercussions are the same. You're hoping for a 1099C. Um, again, this 1099C is, a, is, a, is an interest and income statement where they, the C stands for cancellation of debt. And that, that debt will now be added back to you as an income. That's what you hope for because uh, Consumer Debt Relief Act of 2007, which you can check on Google, uh, President Bush signed before he left office, that allows people who short sell their house between now and 2012, end of 2012, um, to have a tax exemption on the income taxes you'd responsible to pay from that 1099, okay? So that's something that uh, reason a lot of people, and we expect more short sales to be coming faster because here's the other thing, there's nothing short about the short sale except for the money. Uh, it takes a long time, on average about 30 days to 90 days, 90, 90 days being the average, so whether you're buying or selling, it takes about 90 days to settle a short sale after you received an offer. So if you do your, if you do some calculations and there's a marketing time frame for your house, getting an offer and then from getting your offer about you know, 30 to 90 days before you settle and hopefully everything is in, in place to settle, we're getting short on time before this 2012 deadline. So, you know, you may want to consider that. That's a, one, another reason I'm putting this video out there so you all understand that there is a time frame for you to get this cancellation of debt or not, at least not having, being responsible for the taxes on that. If, one more caveat, if it was a primary residence. So investors kind of like out of luck. And there's also little things in that thing where, you know, it has to be the money to have, uh, not have to pay taxes. It has to have been part of the acquisition on the, on the house itself. Uh, one couple things I just want to throw out there real quick, probably have to throw another video or you can actually just hit me up with an email or contact me or whatnot. Uh, we're getting a little bit long on this. Um, it's interesting, Chase, Lytton and Select Portfolio Services, we've seen them actually giving you money to move out of your house. That's pretty neat. So, you know, if you need some moving expenses, you know, a little help to get along, you know, they will actually give you some moving expenses. You know, it's anywhere from 3,000 to 30,000, you know, and that depends, of course, on each situation. Every situation is different. Uh, what if you have a second mortgage? Well, second mortgages, they're kind of out of luck, unfortunately for them. I mean, they have no leverage. They are going to lose their money in any case. Now, on average, they're getting about $6,000 to satisfy the debt. And there's a whole d couple of different ways of satisfying debt. Um, you know, again, there's a 1099, there's a default judgment, there's collections, there's a three-year statute in the state of Maryland. So if you're in Maryland, there's three years for someone to basically try to sue and collect for the money. So there are ways to get out of that, not really get out of that, but to avoid it um, or minimize the chances of that happening. Uh, it's a little bit more detailed than I want to go to in here. Just wanted to let everyone know there that, um, you know, I hope this video has helped. Uh, a lot of my short sale clients are very satisfied with, they just feel light of heart, actually, I can say. I mean, short selling is a lot nicer, friendlier situation than foreclosures. Um, people love to sell their house and get out of their situation. and by the time they foreclose, people are just mad. So properties are just gets in bad shape. So banks understand that, lenders understand that, and that's why the short sale process is actually pretty friendly. Um, and if it's done right, can be you know a, a nice experience. It's not too bad. So if you have any questions, you know, please hit me up with an email, or you know, I'm here to answer any questions free, no problem. You know, consultation. Anything I can do to help anyone understand what they might be getting into. Uh, other than that, it's summertime, so you know, enjoy your vacation. Um, have a good time with your family. Take some time, have some cookouts, and enjoy each other's company. Because you know, it's not good to just work, 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 work. You know, just have some fun. And remember, it's more important the family than just you know working so hard to make the dollar. So talk to you soon, and I hope this video helped. Thank you.